Every second, more than two and one half acres of fertile land on Earth disappears. Yes, this is a harsh reality that we cannot ignore. Currently, over 40% of the world's land area has been desertified, and about 33% of the planet's land is classified as desert or semi-arid. Faced with this threat, many countries have taken bold steps. In China, the Green Great Wall, a strip of forest stretching thousands of miles was planted to stop the Gobi Desert from spreading. In Israel, drip irrigation technology has helped turn the arid Negev Desert into lush, green fields. In North America, instead of relying completely on technology, they have reintroduced bison and beavers, letting their natural behaviors help restore the land. And most surprisingly, Africa has experimented with releasing tortoises to balance the ecosystem. But how could an aquatic animal survive in the harsh desert and even become an ecosystem engineer? Today's documentary will reveal this secret. The Sahara is the hottest desert in the world, almost as large as the United States of America. During the day, temperatures rise above 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And at night, they drop to just 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Annual rainfall is only two to four inches, so little that a glass of water is more than the rainfall for an entire month, making it nearly impossible for any plants to survive. Even more dangerous is the Sahel, a strip of land stretching 3,350 miles along the edge of the Sahara, known as the line between life and death, separating agriculture from burning sand. In 50 years, the Sahel has lost 251,000 square miles to desertification equal to the area of Poland. Now 80% of the land is degraded, threatening the lives of more than 100 million people. Facing the threat of expanding desertification, many solutions have been tried. In the Sahel, farmers without modern machinery have used a traditional method called zai, digging small holes, filling them with organic fertilizer to retain water when it rains, and nurturing seeds inside. A farmer from Burkina Faso, Yacuba Sawadogo, improved this method and achieved unexpected results. Yields increased by up to 500%. That's right, millions of acres of land have been revived. However, this method requires huge labor. Every hole must be dug by hand and every stone placed manually. In the year 2007, Africa launched the Great Green Wall Project, planting a strip of trees 4,800 miles long and 9 miles wide aiming to restore 247 million acres of land. Big ambitions, but harsh reality. By the year 2023, only 18% of the goal had been reached, mainly in Ethiopia and Nigeria. Drought sandstorms and lack of funding caused millions of young trees to die. Even after shifting to natural regeneration and agroforestry, the whole project has only restored about 74 million acres, less than one third of expectations. Many green walls have been abandoned, or uprooted for firewood. In that situation, designers were forced to change their mindset and broaden their approach. To slow the advance of the Sahara, perhaps other natural solutions are needed, even help from tortoises themselves. Oh, have you ever thought that a slow-moving tortoise usually living in the sea could survive and save land from desertification? But this is true. It's the African spurred tortoise, or sulcata, Unlike turtles living around ponds and lakes, Sulcata is the third largest tortoise in the world, only after the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises. An adult can weigh up to 175 to 200 pounds, about the weight of an American man. They live entirely on land, do not need water bodies, and can withstand heat over 122 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and dry cold near 50 degrees Fahrenheit at night. However, this perfectly desert-adapted tortoise is now on the brink of extinction. The problem is sulcata tortoises eat grass, but cattle, sheep, and goats eat everything in their path. On top of that, people hunt them for pets. As a result, sulcata now only exists in about 17% of its original range, from Senegal to Ethiopia. Therefore, sulcata tortoises are now being reintroduced into arid areas. The first pilot started in Senegal in the Furlough Biosphere Reserve in the year 2006. Hundreds of sulcatas were released not only to observe their survival, but also to answer a big question. Can tortoises restart the cycle of life? The initial results were amazing. 
80% of the tortoises survived, and after a short time the first hatchlings were born. Not stopping at Senegal, the program quickly spread to Mali, Niger, Chad, and Burkina Faso. Many international organizations such as Ensemble Foundation Société d'Ornithologie de Paris, Chelonia, United Kingdom, Monaco, Oceanographic Institute, and local communities worked together to implement it. Each tortoise was fitted with a global positioning system chip, tracking every tunnel they dug and every patch of land they improved. This might not be a large-scale change yet, but it is still an impact these animals have brought to land that is quickly disappearing under the pressure of the Sahara and human activity. First look at the Sulcata's front legs. Big, sturdy, covered in hard, armor-like scales, they turn the tortoise into a natural excavator that can dig for hours. They dig tunnels 10 to 13 feet deep and up to 33 feet long underground. There, the tortoise hides from the sun and heat and avoids predators. Oh, and one more thing. These tortoises help restore degraded land in this way. It's actually very simple. When it rains, water flows into the burrow and seeps deep into the ground, spreading everywhere. Thanks to this, many underground areas receive more vital resources, oxygen too. It seeps into the ground and spreads throughout the tunnel system, further improving soil quality. These little tortoises create an air-conditioned home under the sand. From there, insects return, then birds, then small predators. It's true that the Sahel is not a paradise for thousands of species, but some creatures still appear in the small oases created by the tortoises. Second, as we mentioned, Sulcata is a strict vegetarian. They don't need to drink water directly only absorb moisture from plants and soil. On average, a male tortoise weighs about 180 pounds, and some individuals can reach up to 265 pounds. So they need a lot of food. In their diet, they eat all kinds of plants, native grasses, shrubs, cacti, desert flowers, and sometimes even soil rocks, or animal droppings to supplement minerals. The tortoise's slow digestion can take many days, even weeks, during which they travel long distances and unintentionally become seed spreaders. When they eat, grass seeds pass through their digestive system and are expelled with a protective coat of natural fertilizer. Thanks to this, the germination rate is much higher than when seeds fall directly onto dry ground. Not only that, tortoise droppings are extremely rich in nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium elements that any plant needs. See, just from the simple act of eating and pooping, tortoises have turned dead land into places where plants have a chance to survive. The last thing is their strong reproductive ability. Did you know that reintroducing endangered animals is often very difficult because they struggle to breed in captivity? But that's not true for the African spurred tortoise. That's why bringing them back to help protect a green Africa is truly one of the best things we can do. African spurred tortoises breed very easily in captivity, needing only minimal effort in specialized breeding centers. They quickly return to normal breeding and their eggs almost always hatch into healthy young. On average, a female can lay 15 to 30 eggs per clutch and breeding centers can provide hundreds of individuals each year without fear of extinction. In the wild, they can live for over 100 years, long enough to maintain and expand the population. After just a few years of reintroduction, the changes in the Sahel have been extremely positive. Reports from the International Union for Conservation of Nature show that in areas with sulcata, tortoises' vegetation density increased by 30 to 40% in just five years. In Furlo, Senegal, satellite images show small green patches beginning to appear around the release sites, where previously there was only dry sand and red dust. Scientists call this the ecological footprint that can be recognized even from above. Not only that, the effectiveness is also measured by the return of other species. A 2018 study in Niger found that the number of insects in areas with tortoises was more than double that of control areas without tortoises. And as insects returned, sparrows and migratory birds appeared as well.
Local people even said that after a few rainy seasons they saw herds of goats and cattle coming to graze on new grass near the tortoise release areas, the ecosystem chain is being restarted from the beginning. But along with those achievements come huge challenges. The pet trade in tortoises has not stopped. On the black market, a young sulcata can sell for 200 to 300 United States dollars, enough to tempt many locals to hunt them. In addition, habitat loss is a serious problem. More than 80% of the Sahel has been degraded due to overgrazing and unsustainable agriculture. Climate change makes things even harsher. In the year 2022 alone, drought pushed 40 million people in the Sahel into food insecurity. If tortoises disappear, the ecosystem will lose an ecosystem engineer. Scientists warn that this could trigger an ecological domino effect, causing the degradation of the Sahel to happen many times faster. Everyone understands clearly that restoring this species also means saving lands from the Sahara Desert. But the African spurred tortoise is not the only species being reintroduced in the Sahel, partly to help fight desertification. But in such a vast and harsh battlefield as the Sahara tortoises alone cannot change everything. That's why people have turned to other ecological allies. One of the most mentioned species is the scimitar horned oryx. Once a symbol of the Sahel, by the end of the 20th century, the International Union for Conservation of Nature had to declare it extinct in the wild. The reasons are not unfamiliar rampant hunting and fierce competition from livestock. However, the year 2016 marked a turning point. With the support of the Sahara Conservation Fund and the government of Chad, the first individuals were reintroduced from breeding centers in Abu Dhabi and Europe back to their homeland. At first, many doubted whether they could survive the harsh climate here. But just eight years later, by the year 2024, the population had exceeded 600 individuals, a resounding success in conservation history. Not only surviving scimitar-horned oryxes also play a special ecological role during migration. Their hooves churn up the topsoil, creating countless depressions that retain rainwater while leaving behind nutrient-rich dung that helps grass seeds sprout. At the same time, the North African ostrich, the largest bird in the world, has also been brought back. Previously, they were found throughout the Sahel, but were wiped out by hunting for meat eggs and competition from livestock. In the year 2016, individuals raised in semi-wild conditions fitted with global positioning system tracking bands began to be released in Chad and Niger. Local people were initially surprised to see those giant footprints return to the hot sands. Impact quickly became clear. Each scratch creates a small hole that retains rainwater, like many ponds in the desert. Ostrich droppings rich in nutrients also improve the soil and nourish microorganisms, turning dead land into places where plants can take root. When you put it all together, the picture becomes magical. Sulcata tortoises create moisture. Scimitar-horned oryxes churn and hold water in the soil. And North African ostriches dig holes to catch rain. Thanks to this, humans are no longer alone in the fierce battle with the Sahara, but have nature on their side, building a vibrant and sustainable defense system. The documentary about the journey of the Sulcata tortoise helping to revive the Sahara has come to an end, but this has never been a distant story. You are watching this video and maybe you feel as we do that there is something both astonishing and a little heartbreaking. Because what is happening on the edge of the desert is not just Africa's story, but a warning for the whole world. Imagine one day the fields that once fed your family crack and dry up water disappears in just a few hours and your whole village is forced to leave home. This is not a hypothesis it has happened and is happening in the Sahel and many other places around the world. The lesson is very clear if a slow-moving tortoise, a herd of antelope, or a few ostriches can help restore a land that seemed dead. Then humans with knowledge and resources can do even more. What we need is a change in mindset. Instead of fighting nature, let's cooperate with it. When we know how to respect, listen, and act in time, we not only save the Sahara, 
but also save our own future. So what do you think? Do people have the courage to learn how to cooperate with nature instead of fighting it? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you believe stories like this deserve to be spread, don't forget to like, subscribe, and, sub and share the video so more people know there is still hope for this planet.